So almost two years ago, I think it was, I made a video about the video store from the 90s, not Blockbuster, but Suncoast. I thought it was a decent video, but it was taken down by YouTube probably around late 2022. Put a lot of work into that. Put a lot of effort into that. And lost it to some weird copyright strike. But that's water under the bridge now. Now that I think about it, it's on my Rumble channel. The original but check out franchise history tv's rumbo channel i think i will post more videos over there youtube plays way too many games now and i spent on n hours and hours with my previous series on the monsterverse re-editing to fit youtube standards and after a while i learned youtube is just being nitpicky and warner brothers but the removal of the original sun coast video bothered me so bad i had to make another one but different from the previous one. So I'll play YouTube's little game. Presenting Suncoast, the video store at your local mall in the 90s. So in my original video, I went with an intro explaining that I completed a video reminiscing about my time as a kid growing up in the 90s watching Saturday morning cartoons. And oh, how I miss those days eating a big bowl of Captain Crunch or Frosted Flakes to watch the Men in Black series or Batman or Superman, whatever. Good times. Good times they were. But on to Suncoast. It was a video store that was usually in malls across the country. He used to go there from time to time, probably second to the great video or rental store of Blockbuster, and that's another drive down memory lane right there that I won't take in this video, of course. But I seldomly bought movies from Suncoast. I just went in there just to fill the aura. I think I bought most of my VHS tapes from Target. I think Sears used to have them in Walmart from back in the day, I don't remember. That's so long ago. It could have been uh, Coles, the grocery store. I don't know if you guys remember Coles, the grocery store. I think that was mainly in Wisconsin. There was all mother stores I can't think of off the top of my head right now. But moving on. I do remember buying Jurassic Park 3 from Suncoast. I do remember that. I don't know how I remember that. But here's some information I found interesting that, that never really occurred to me. Probably never remembered. But VHS tapes back in the day usually ran anywhere from $40 to almost $100. It was quite expensive. But does anyone remember when grocery stores had areas where you can rent or buy movies? I think that concept finally died in some areas. No thanks to Redbox. I think some grocery stores, at least for in Arizona, for example, you can still buy Blu-rays at like stores like Safeway out here in Arizona. But back to the main thought. Back in the early 80s, most video outlets had a very hard time selling VHS due to high costs. But it wasn't until 1983 when the prices were lowered. Plus, everyone wanted to own the latest installment of the original Star Wars trilogy, Return of the Jedi. Little did they know, almost 40 years later, that their beloved franchise will be completely eviscerated. Sorry, I'm not going to go down that route with Star Wars. Musicland, a company that specialized in selling music, saw this as a plus and made a move on it before Suncoast was even a place that existed. Musicland was a store that opened in 1955 in Minneapolis by Glover Cleveland Sayer II. Dang. Sound like the president. But anyways, it continued to be handled by the Hitchler Brothers, a Minneapolis-based regional record distributor and owner of Soma Records. Musicland expanded when it merged with J.L. Marsh, Pickwick International, and then American Can Company by the late 1970s. In 1978, Sam Goody was born. With Sam Goody replacing the names of Musicland at different stores, the company saw the booming mall installments placing Sam Goody stores in the malls across the country. In 1986, Musicland and Paramount Studios made an alliance after seeing the thrill of the video store, so they created Paramount Pictures, the store, not the studio. 
The first store was located in Roseville, a suburb of Twin Cities in Minnesota. By 1988, the name of the store changed, and it would change to Suncoast Ocean Picture Company. Music Land continued to expand not only with Suncoast and Sandwich, but with Discount Records on Q and Media Play into the 1990s. But more on Music Land later because they make some goofy mistakes later on. Suncoast Motion Picture Company was a hit. Stores popped up everywhere and every mall you can think of. And it's height, the company had 400 locations across the country alone. Now, me being raised in Milwaukee, I think. The defunct Northridge Mall, Southridge Mall, the twin sister to the south, on the south side of Milwaukee. Uh, Brookfoot Square, I think, had one. That would be on the west side. And I think Grand Avenue Mall downtown had one. I think so. But at first, they did specialize in selling VHS, assume movie, memorabilia, action figures towards the later part. Not only did the store so movies and memorabilia but CDs and vinyl records as well. Sam Goody was specialized big on that. It's also responsible for many big time celebrities in the music world. Their career starting up. The movie company store was booming in the 1990s, just as much as Blockbuster was. In 1999, Music Land launched websites for subsidies, but after the turn of the century, Music Land was sold to Best Buy in 2001 for $685 million. They tried to use the subsidy Sam Goody to reach out to the younger generation by selling more popular music and consumer electronics. But Best Buy purchase of Musicland was more of a problem than a help to Best Buy. Musicland faced a settlement in court due to overpricing CDs to customers equaling to five million overpriced. I think it was like five dollars, over five dollars per CD. And so Musicland and other companies such as Tower Records had to pay three million in settlement money. That is 4.86 million adjusted for 2023. Or 24, probably a little bit higher now. Most employees of Musicland were big fans of Best Buy's tactics of selling more music and video games than books in the company's on Q stores. Most of the on Q stores were converted to Sam Goodies. Most of the on Q stores were also in rural areas. Before we go on with the show, how about you guys like, share, subscribe to Franchise History TV, even comment down in the comments down below. I'm also on Instagram at Franchise underscore TV and on Twitter at TV underscore Franchise. I also have two other channels if you guys are interested, Lone Wolf Adventure TV and Franchise 2 Sports. So uh, yeah, subscribe to those three channels and also like, share, subscribe on all three of them. I say subscribe three times. I'm done. Bye. When his failed business practices and settlements happened, Best Buy decided to close 20 Sunco stores and 90 Sam Goody stores in 2003. I remember when this happened. I think it was around the same time Blockbuster was starting to, you know, be on his way out as well. But unfortunately, in 2006, the Music Land Group filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Store closures happened, including 80 Sunco stores. I found that this happened due to the rise of Walmart as well, Target, and also Best Buy becoming more areas for consumers to buy movies. And it didn't get any prettier with Suncoast. In the next few years, we would see the rise of Netflix, video on demands, especially from cable satellite companies like Time Warner and DirecTV selling movies. And in 2006 as well, Trans World Entertainment, now known as Caspian Holdings Company, purchased all of Music Land's assets for 104.2 million in cash and 18.1 million in assumed liabilities. Transworld elected to keep the name Suncoast for the remaining 170 stores around the country. But on December 2009, Transworld decided to close 150 stores. Now, let me take you a little story, a personal story that I experienced. Now, back in 2012, when I used to live near LA, I took a visit to the Down Elbow Fashion Center. I don't even know how I even got to that place. But Down Elbow Fashion Center is located in Torrance, California. Probably one of the biggest malls on the West Coast. And I happened to stumble upon the Sun Coast. Now, 
I won't lie, I nearly forgot about the store. But when I went into that store, I went down memory lane. It brought back memories of the past. There was no VHSs, but there was Blu-rays and DVDs and action figures. If I'd known it would be the last time I ever stepped into a Sunco store, I would have appreciated even more. Sucked the smells in even more. Okay, that's enough. But now I'll skip ahead to 2023. Supposedly, there's three Suncoasts left on this planet. One located in Beaumont, Texas at Parkdale Mall. Omaha, Nebraska at the West Rose Mall. And Jacksonville, North Carolina at the Jacksonville Mall with the headquarters still located in Minnesota. Now, I tried to commit more research to see if there's any more out there. Supposedly before 2022, there was a couple more in Beaver Creek, Ohio, Greensboro, North Carolina, and Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Madison, Wisconsin. Recently, there was a store closed in New Jersey, but I think those other four stores are not closed for good. Wait, what was that? An update? Oh, shoot, we got an update from the producer. All right, stop knocking over there. I get it. But a 2024 update. The sun coast at the West World's Mall in Omaha, Nebraska has been shut down. But the Beaver Creek, Ohio location is actually a FYE and Sun Coast combined store, but more on that later. So, there's three. Because Omaha is gone. There's Park, there's Beaumont, Jacksonville, and now this one in Ohio. So that's three still running in the U.S. But since 2012, Suncoast has changed its parent companies again with Sunrise Records buying them out in 2020. And then Sunrise Records is also the parent company of For Your Entertainment, aka FYE, which is still around. Matter of fact, there's one down the street from me at the local mall. I think it's a lot of FYE stores out in Arizona somewhere. Sit down, please. Mint julep. It's bee bopping and all over me. Delusions! Now, why did Suncoast Motion Picture Company rise and then fell on its face? Well, the obvious is because of the rise of digital streaming from every damn Hollywood studio. Netflix and Amazon as well as Redbox just destroyed it. The other convenience of those. Plus the addition of many malls closing down to the expansion and the use of Amazon. I do really miss walking into the black painted walls with red neon stores, feeling like it was in the actual movie theater. Hmm, I do say Planet Hollywood and Suncoast do get off those same vibes. But anyways, well, all the stories, well, I would say Aerie Suncoast was dark, but they did have that red neons in them. The stout with the Suncoast sign on the wall. It's sad. I like to buy my movies, the physical copies, especially now, because these streaming services in Hollywood continue to change things to legendary movies due to certain people needing to feel better about themselves if you catch my drift. But Suncoast, as well as Sam Goody and Blockbuster, are just victims of the rise and bloviated rise of corporate greed, and well, the rise of bloviated, no, the bloviated rise of countless streaming ass that I just can't stop short of a ramp. The thrill for the stores in those areas, I, I, I mean. I miss the old days. I really do. I miss Suncoast. I miss Blockbuster. Shoot, I even miss the, the Warner Brothers store they used to have in malls. Actually, they still got Warner Brothers stores, but I think there's one on the actual Warner Brothers studio. I actually went to there about a couple years ago. But anyways, RIP to Suncoast and many other companies like it that brought nostalgia, joy, to us 90s kids, forever living on in our memories, we had a chance to experience it.